rivers of Babylon we sat and wept and we remembered Zion there on the poplars we hung our harps for there our captors asked us for songs our tormentors demanded songs of joy said sing us one of the songs of Zion good afternoon and welcome back to my Harlem portraits the show that aims at shedding a light on the fundamental contribution of African-Americans to the building of this country and on Black excellence. Today, we have two very special guests with us that who are talking, going to talk about their common project, a fantastic project. The two guests are Mrs. Jessica Gold, and Ezra Knight. Their project, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. The title is Babylon, Ghetto, Renaissance, and Modern Oblivion. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. So I saw, I had an invitation from the Casa Italiana Marimo Zerilli, or Zerilli Marimo, in New York, and uh, I was uh, immediately struck by the title and by what it entailed. So I said, I need to go to this because on top of having this program, I'm also the secretary of the Associazione per gli Italiani nel Mondo. And therefore this seemed to be like a, a perfect conjunction of the two, right? And I'm so happy I did because I found it amazing. So I thank you and I thank you, the Casa Italiana for giving us the opportunity of seeing your project. So Jessica Gould is a soprano, filmmaker, artist, director, and writer. And now, thanks to her first film, The Babylon, Get to Renaissance and Modern Oblivion, she's an award-winning filmmaker with over 90 laurels to her name, which include, among others, and I cite this because they are from my country, <laughs> Best Foreign Short Film from the Ast International Film Festival, the Violetta d'Oro, which is the top prize from the Parma International Music Film Festival, Best Original Script from the London International Monthly Film Festival, and Best First Time Directors from the Silk Road Festival of Cannes, among others. You are also the founder and artistic director of Salon Sanctuary Concerts, which is based in New York City, and mm -hmm. which is the production company with which you made this movie. Mm -hmm. And last, but not least, you are the only American who have ever been invited to create programs for four notable Florentine institutions, Palazzo Bardi, Palazzo Gondi, Palazzo Guicciardini, and Associazione per Boboli. Grazie. <laughs> mille grazie. Brava, brava, brava. Bravissima. <laughs> grazie mille. Amo la, la vostra paese. <laughs> I love my country too. Bellissimo. <laughs> Extra Knight, you are an actor which, with a voice of amber. That's what I think. I read somewhere a voice of Titan. No, to me is a voice of amber. And you are known for various film, TV and theater works. I just named a very few because otherwise we're here until tomorrow. <laughs> Tender Bar, which is from 2020 on, Fantastic movie. I saw it. I was crying. It's amazing. <laughs> it's an amazing movie. You were in Lower Order, Matthew, most recently in Winston, which is a recurrent in CBS, uh, on CBS. 
On Broadway, you were in Mean Girls, Pretty Woman, and Cymbeline. You were off Broadway in many, many, among other Cold Country and The Merchant of Venice and Othello. And in TV on The Equalizer, Ordinary Joe, Raising Cannon. I love that. I watched all that. I love that. Billions, Wu Tang, and so on. All right. So, you, Ezra, are the narrator of this marvelous uh, night uh, journey through music written by Jessica and created and directed by Jessica. And there are words that, that come from the ancient Kora virtuosi of Western Africa up to the Italian Jewish composer Salomone Rossi, 1570-1630, of whom I had never heard of before, so thank you, to the young African-American composer, Brandon Waddles. So tell me, uh, Jessica, this is a 29th minutes voyage through history. Tell me how, why you started to do this project. Well, it was, uh, it came from two, two different streams in my life. One was the original basis of my research, which for years has been uh, viewing music through the prism, viewing history through the prism of music. Mm -hmm. And to, because I think that uh, as a specialist in early music, I've grown accustomed to to seeing the surprises and the discoveries that music can reveal to us about the time of its creation. And one of the discoveries that has always fascinated me is the unsung musicians, those who were eclipsed, those who gave so much and contributed so much and then were written out of history. Mm -hmm. And that applies to the most marginalized populations. So in Babylon, we have two polarities. We have two ghettos we have two renaissances that are 400 years apart. The ghetto of the Contrariforma, the Counter-Reformation in Italy, when Jew, uh, Italian Jews were put behind walls yeah. and their roles in society were severely re more restricted than they had even been before. In the midst of a glorious renaissance which was one of the apexes of Western civilization, which mm -hmm. yielded so much and brought so much forward brought culture so much forward and the timeline of culture and the developments and innovations of Western culture. Uh, and that some of the contributors to, those, to that culture and to those innovations were the people behind that ghetto, behind those ghetto walls. Yeah. Then we switch forward to the ghetto of our own time, which never ends. But we did have a Renaissance, which was called the Harlem Renaissance in the twenties and thirties during which the content creators, as it were, were African-Americans who were not allowed to attend, who perform, yeah. mm -hmm. and whose, whose great innovations of the blues in the blues and jazz worlds were the delight of white patrons yeah. and derived from a rich history that goes back thousands of years from Western Africa, taken with them and passed on generation and generation. <laughs> eventually becoming American, the, the American popular music that we know today. However, the people, the artists without whom none of this would have been possible, this Renaissance would not have happened, were treated so terribly yep. and were erased from history. And even in later times, their, their contributions to what became rock music was completely erased. Um, so I felt that was worth, worthy of exploration. And why does this, with the bigger questions of why do we always have a need to put somebody in a ghetto, some group of people that's not like the rest of us, whoever it may be, mm -hmm. that always happens. And why is it at some of the most splendid moments of human development, is it that the most marginalized people who are contributing the most mm -hmm. are not given credit for making this happen. That's why, because their power scares. Right, That's yes, one can argue that. Yeah. There are many arguments, there are many, there are many answers to this question. I'm not saying that there's one answer. I just <laughs> want to provoke people into thinking about it. 
and not taking for granted that, oh, there was the Renaissance and then there was the Enlightenment and then there was the founding of America and then there was the Harlem Renaissance and that was all nice. And now we're here now. And now we have so many wonderful pop stars. No, that we, we have to dig deeper and look deeper and see who was left out in the cold. Fantastic. That, that, that is a very important subject that you have underlined, a very important que question and problem that we have. So Ezra, how did you get involved in this project and what struck you so much that you needed to be in there? Well, uh, thank you for having me, Maria. Uh, I think uh, your very uh, existence and your presence here in Harlem and your connection to uh, how you happen to see this work uh, speaks to a certain um, a confluent connection that we actually share. Uh, people don't always understand those connections. I'm, I'm so happy to have you bring this forward and show that that connection it exists between Italy and its history and Harlem and its history and in walk Jessica Gould and Ezra Knight and somehow it all ties together. Uh, Jessica is um, my soul sister. Um, <laughs> she soul, when I say soul, I mean it, you know, you black mean. power, full power, world power, you know, she, <laughs> all of it. She understands and we've connected in that with work uh, at Salon Sanctuary before on um, a couple of previous projects. So we share an artistic uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica is an academician uh, who <laughs> pursues the intellectual and well as, as well as the kind of uh, textual foundations of art. I share the same uh, regard for that as well. A lot, I've done a lot of Shakespeare and classical theater and that kind of is kind of what brought us together uh, initially uh, with Salon Sanctuary. Uh, so this was just a continuation mm -hmm. of the work with my soul sister here, Jessica. And so when she called me during lockdown in 2020, <laughs> and she was up in a cabin <laughs> uh, in the woods, <laughs> that, right? <laughs> going, going crazy, but <laughs> needing to make something out of the madness. Yeah. Um, and so that uh, so it's, you know, when your friend, your soul sister calls you and says, hey, you want to work on this thing? You say, yeah, sure. You know, I'm locked down too. Let's do something. I'm in. What do you want me to do? That's how it started. Uh, what happened beyond that is a testament to her uh, genius and abilities, a testament to her connection to others, like-minded artists who are also available to her to work on this piece and take the dare and leap into this unknown and make this thing happen. Um, and, the, and the structural aspects that help pull it together with Casa Italiana and some time and some resources to make this happen. Uh, but it's the work. It's, it's the work that brought me into this. It's the connection with Jessica. And um, hey, uh, as a black man living in Harlem, in America, as an artist, all these things tie into everything that I am. The act of the spirit of this piece, uh, the like-mindedness of Jessica's pursuit of that as well, to tell these stories, to ask these questions, to spark this dialogue. Um, this is the work we love. It's certainly the work I love. And to be able to share that with people and have it connect and land and win laurels and to take us places and to continue to grow, that's, um, that's that's why I'm on this planet doing what I do. Uh, so that's that's how I came into this piece. And I love you, Ezra, because uh, <laughs> film or no film, Ezra, Ezra's genius as a narrator and as a voice actor brought this project a million miles beyond what it could have been. It could have been this like teeny little academic thing commissioned by Casi Italiana and been, you know, screened on online once and gone home. And that would have been it. <laughs> that would have been the end of it. And everybody would have forgotten about it. And without, you know, Oz here, <laughs> the voice of the prophet and the voice of God, the name of the prophet and the voice of God, we would not have had the success that we did. And I have to say that as the creator of this project, I was blown away by how every part, every moving part of this machine was at the top of its game. The Kaleidoscope Vocal Ensemble are some of the best singers working in early music today. I'm sorry they couldn't be with us on this call today, but 
you know, these people like you cannot, <laughs> the joke is, well, they were on Zoom in different places because they're never in the same place available at the same time <laughs> because they're so good. They're always booked up. Mm -hmm. um, and then Aaron Fagerstrom, we need to pay uh. absolute, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we need to bow before his genius because he made this film on the technical level. He was the audio mixer and the videographer. And all these people singing in different places, like my scene, the lutenist was in Toronto. I was in the middle of the woods in New England. I mean, we, you know, <laughs> that's how this was done. And he made everybody sound as if they were in the same room, which not every videographer can do to that degree of success. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm usually when you have this many people involved, there's something that's not quite at yeah. the level of, of the best, mm -hmm. you know, the best component, but everybody was just extraordinary. And I'm so grateful that they I'm were perfect. Here. Because by the little I know you now, I know you do not accept less than perfection. <laughs> <laughs> well, True. True. I, just, yeah. I just realized, I said, okay, <laughs> right. And so this perfection, first of all, you told me one thing that was incredible, that it was all shot on phones. Yes, with the exception of Ezra's scenes where he's reading, where he's reciting the, the Psalm, uh, the Psalm 137, everything else was done on cell phones. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, my scene, I, I, I ordered a um, Renaissance fair cape for $11 from Amazon two days before. <laughs> And I put it on over my pajamas. And I, you know, my friend like put my cell phone on a on a stand, and it was eight in the morning. And I'm like, how am I going to hear the music? Oh yeah, I put it on my phone underneath the 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 Renaissance Fair cape <laughs> with, <laughs> with little earphones, <laughs> and then I just lip synced. And I'm like. Yeah, Warner Brothers is that. <laughs> this is yeah. not 2060 Fox, <laughs> but yeah. here we are. And uh, and then we looked at the footage, and I'm like, you know, this is an unbelievable yeah. story. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, actually, there was a version, Maria, the earlier version before we went and done did a special shoot for my particular parts yeah. where I speak the proverbs because for the film festivals we had to modify the format that it was shot in. Oh. It was originally in my bathrobe, <laughs> done done with a tablet, just like everything else. And it worked beautifully. Mm -hmm. We and only had, had like to modify it. <laughs> right, with, a, with my bathrobe hood, my hooded bathrobe, it all worked the same way from what you were moved by when you saw it at Casia Taniana at the screening. It was the same piece. It just, we had to modify uh, a certain format for the yes. for the big screen. That's yeah, cool. that's so, the only reason that the that yeah, it, that's magic. That's just I magic. This <laughs> is one one good thing that came out of a pandemic yeah. is that yeah. especially creative people, yeah. instead of going crazy because we <laughs> all were going crazy at a certain point, yeah. said. I need to channel this creativity into doing something. Otherwise, yes. I'll freak out. Yeah, yeah. And it brought out, like, for example, I learned to do the Zoom <laughs> during the pandemic because I used to go in the studio to do my shows, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and now I'm thinking this is so much easier because yes. I don't have to go downtown. Yeah. I don't have to find the, the, the team. I don't have to coincide the time that the team are free with the time that subjects are free is so much easier yeah. it's just you and me no con context is amazing in this particular regard because you know it was 2020 we were locked down i mm. think that's an underpinning of the power of this is the passion and hunger of the artists to communicate and to perform something and to just do something you know creative with their 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 uh, instruments, their voices, and their talents, and Jessica completely uh, tapped into that for her own self as well as for the benefit of all of us. But what's also interesting about the crucible that uh, was 2020 uh, was that was the um, igniting of our great cultural reckoning, as we're calling it. Right, yeah. the George Floyd murder was visible to so many as a result, which set forth a desire to communicate 
and to regard stories about inclusion, about history, about uh, struggle, activism, um, all this stuff is contained in Babylon. And Jessica was able to harness that energy in a way. And that's what art does. It kind of finds itself in yeah. the context, right? It's the, all yeah. these things are happening. You can't make them up. They have no. to actually fucking happen. <laughs> and then boom, the art comes out of that. And so that's another fulfilling thing about this. It, it, it's, a, it's a vibrant testament to life and, uh, and to creativity. And I have to say though, I, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I have to say though, I was very fortunate because Kazi Italiana gave me their usual annual call in the fall wow. of 2020, like October. And they just said, so what's rolling around inside your head? <laughs> <laughs> Which is their, wow. their question for me always. And then they like, they go shopping. I'm like, I have, I have this idea. I have that idea. I have this idea about, about this, this, you know, this Psalm 137 that musicians seem to always want to set. And then I'm like, oh, right because it's about musicians being treated really badly so they they always they always said it now you know for the last 700 years there's a babylon setting and uh and then they said ver something very interesting this was costia kostic at casa italiano who's the administrative director and he said that sounds amazing to set those two pieces but can you include it has to include text so that we can understand mm -hmm. what you're talking about and what the connection is if we're not a musician and I said, okay, so I can make like a two hour film, right? And he said, no, it has to be 30 minutes. <laughs> and I said, so I'll be covering that's, 400 that's not easy. in 30 minutes. <laughs> that's not easy. <laughs> oh, they did me a favor. 30 you minutes. Know, you know, not only did they commission it and make it possible, but brevity is the soul of wit, you know? And when you have such a constrained time form to get your message across, you get rid of a whole lot of extraneous stuff that doesn't really yeah. need to be said. It might be interesting, but you get, you know, your core mess, you get to the point. point. Yeah. That's very important. And one, one thing that I wanted you to underline is that in, in this movie, you talk about the Italian Jews of Mantua during the period of Mantova, as we say in Italian, mm -hmm. during the period of the counter-reformation, as you said, and the African-American before, during, and after the Harlem Renaissance, right? And you played that music, the music that is the one that you, it, it's your love. And then you went from there, which is um, played and sang by the Kaleidoscope vo Vocal Ensemble. And then you went to Ma Rainey, Sister Rosetta Tharp, Big Mama Thornton, the Feast Jubilee Singers, and two West African, amazing West African musician, Kevin Nathaniel Hilton and your, your Cuba Sisoko. So this, I'm saying this because who is watching us must be very interested by this because this is an unusual setting that you show and fantastic. Thank you. And this, you got a Grammy nomination. Not yet. <laughs> We're on the Grammy shortlist. Ah, we short got on the ballot. Okay. We got on the ballot, which was very exciting. I have to say, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very exciting to be on the ballot with Mick Jagger and Adele. And wow. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. All well, these other, you know, amazing, these right? musicians. <laughs> Incredible, incredible. <laughs> this, 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 so amazing. I, I love this story. And the film was just pure poetry. It was soul mending. It was a, a voyage into beauty and sorrow and 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 hardship and hope and resurrection all that that's how i felt while i was watching it i went through all these emotions thank you i'm honored beautiful 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 thing so i wish you uh to be nominated for the grammy thank you so, we can come back and talk about this. And so one last thing I would like 
to ask both of you, what do you want uh, the viewers to go back home with after seeing this movie? I want minorities to stop fighting with each other and realize that they will accomplish their goals if they unite. And when we fight with each other and we ask questions like, why are these two groups in the same film? Why did you do that? Because my group is more important and we suffered more. Mm -hmm. We do the job of the oppressors for them. Yes. That needs to stop now. That's right. That's right. Beautiful message. I, mine would be similar too, because in the wake of uh, the recent fervor over Kanye West's anti-Semitic statements, I sit here as a black man working with a Jewish woman, mm -hmm. telling the story of the, of the combined journey of the two. Mm -hmm. That says everything. We said this before he said anything about that. Mm -hmm. So it just says we have to repeat it <laughs> um, because the idiocy, the sickness, the illness is still out there and very much metastasized throughout the society and throughout the world. So if this is one 90 plus laurels, someone's understanding that connection and that story in an innate way, if not intellectually, then they're getting it in their heart and soul. And that to me is the biggest part of my journey, my mission as an artist, and to share this with Jessica uh, and other like-minded souls like you, Maria, Thank you again for uh, having us here and for your eloquence and your words and your, your passion. When you were in the space at the, at the screening, I remember hearing you, I'm like, wow, this, she's in Harlem? This is amazing. <laughs> yes. This is amazing. This is a moment to sort of share how connected we are. Mm -hmm. And so that would be my hope that we just continue telling this story because now if we're in the great reckoning, those of us who are ready to speak to it, we have to speak and that's what we're doing and so give people a chance to be uh, moved by it. That's that's everything to me. And these are the times. Yesterday, I was at the inauguration of renaming of this new, of this Broadway theater to Lena Horn. Yes. And it was mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. First theater in, on Broadway that is named after a black woman after we had James Earl Jones uh, theater nominated to him not so long ago. So yes. I'm thinking Great White Way is not white anymore. It's cappuccino <laughs> color. And I like cappuccino much better than just milk. <laughs> <laughs> and bagels come in all colors. <laughs> That's right. The everything bagel. <laughs> bagel. <laughs> so on this note, thank you for being with us. Thank you and uh, my wishes for the nomination. Mm -hmm. And thank you for to our viewers for being with us. We'll see you next time, 1230. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, Maria. Ciao, thank you, Maria. Ciao. Mille grazie. Mille grazie. Grazie anche a te, altrettanto. <laughs> <laughs>